pharmacist and I work for the supply unit uh, in Brussels. Fantastic. And why are you here today? What are you showing us? And I'm here to uh, present some practical solution to secure the pharmaceutical supply chain in the difficult environment where we do actually operate. Okay. And we start from the consideration that the quality of medicinal products, it's really related to the quality of the storage of those products. All the way along the supply chain from the manufacturer go. to delivery to the So we started a couple of years ago with training all of the actors involved with the handling okay. of medicinal products right, and it? mapping all our stocks in the field. But then we found out that we need the tools in order to meet the operational reality. So uh, we developed, and we can... So we start, start over here. here. So from the beginning of the chain, uh, this is something that we now adopt when, uh, uh, since the beginning of the supply chain. This is a, sp a special cover which uh, protects the uh, medicinal products uh, from the thermal exposure uh, during the air transport. So okay, so we can imagine loading on a bunch of boxes with pharmaceutical products in yeah. Brussels from our supply center, which is temperature controlled. And then this will help uh, maintain a reason. What is a reasonable temperature? temperature uh, actually, for the difference uh, with deploying this solution can be up to 15 degrees okay. of difference. So because by putting this blanket on, yeah, uh, we yeah. can make a 15 degree distance and therefore increase the quality of the transport. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then it lands in Afghanistan and they offload on exactly. the plane and it's 45 degrees on the top. And we have to consider that if we send medical supply to Afghanistan, we have several steps. steps. Yeah. So this is supposed to protect products within all these steps. Understood. Okay, right. and so now we've arrived in the capital of so we are in Kabul, arriving in the capital with our little blanket. But and then we still, what's next? We still need to send these products uh, to the project. Yeah. So not in every uh, country we have developed means, uh, we have refrigerated trucks. So we needed to develop something that can be deployed in all the vehicles available. So what we have been developing uh, is a big isothermal box which can keep the temperature acceptably below 30 degrees for several days, this is foldable. So, so this is can, be, yeah, yeah. can be actually assembled on directly on the truck, mm -hmm. it's reusable. And in order to keep the temperature within the range, use ice pack, which are the same one that we use for uh, uh, our vaccine <laughs> carriers. Tried and tested result, fill it with water, freeze it, you know exactly. what you're doing. Yeah. Same, so these, same way. So these will be kept in the mission. If those those are uh, actually already in the mission. So yeah. we just need to send, uh, to send the box, which is reusable. Yeah. And then we normally have already the ice pack. Uh, uh, in the mission. So you've taken the cold chain concept where we used to use ice packs to keep stuff between two and eight degrees and turned it into a cool but chain concept. Exactly, to yeah. keep uh, acceptably below 25 degrees for several days. Fantastic. And have you tested it in the field? So yeah, far? definitely. This is currently deployed in uh, Mauritania. Okay. And we, we have at least other uh, two countries uh, on the pipeline. And how do you know it works? But because we tested, actually, this is this way have been tested uh, uh, on, uh, on the thermostatic chambers. Okay. But then, actually, what we do have also developed, uh, it's a system for remote control of temperature. Because so many times it's not that uh, uh, easy to uh, daily check our yeah. cold chain in, in the project. So um, we have been developing a system for telemetry, remote control. So yeah. we just need to put a probe in each fridge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The device is connected via um, GSM network and it's also connected through internet. Mm -hmm. It does have a backup battery in case the power supply is not, uh, it's not regular. Okay. And this can give us an alert in case of power cut and also in case of temperature out of the range and also can allow us to uh, directly monitor the temperature of our fridges. Well, this is fantastic. Before, so, I used to have to uh, get out of bed on a Sunday morning as a loggy so, and go and check uh, in the, the, the fridges are still okay. Now I don't have to get out of bed. It's just going to call me if there's so a problem. It's this great. is just an example. From here in London, I can show you the temperatures of our fridges in Haiti. But this is live. This is the temperature this is of our fridges this in is, Haiti right now. Yeah. We, we currently were deploying this in uh, at least uh, uh, three projects in Haiti, and there are also several. So what is the actual <laughs> temperature of your fridge M5 in Haiti? Currently, it's, it's within the range. So Which, we, between 2.5 yeah, and 7.5? Between 6 plus 3. 2 to plus 2, to between uh, plus 2 to plus, plus 8, eight uh, Celsius degrees. 
And we so, can see, in fact, the diurnal range here yeah. coming up. Uh, it it yeah. is actually help us to also monitor some instable context where we do not normally have always the access. Okay. So, and, uh, and this is also one of the benefits that we notice on deploying this. Mark, obviously I know that vaccines often require a, real, a really careful control of temperature to, to maintain their efficacy. Are there other drugs that you prioritise as a pharmacist to say, well, it's, import it's more important that these drugs are kept cooler? Or Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, we, we've been focused on the cold chain first, but then we noticed that also the other products outside the cold chain need specific attention. Mm. So any other oral or uh, injectable drug yeah. need attention as well. Mm. Okay, we do not have that specific range of plus two to plus eight. Yeah. And that's the reason why we've been developing a cool uh, chain a rather cool than chain. A cold And also, chain, yeah. for instance, we've been developing and deployed another, another system to set up emergency medical stocks so we can transform it thanks to... So there's a uh, photo here, Matty, to zoom in on. Thanks to uh, some panels, we can transform a simple shipping container into a huge isolated medical stock. Uh. That is an example. That was the setup that we did for the search and rescue project in the Mediterranean, where so we had to set up an emergency a medical stock in, a, in an arbor. Yeah. So with this, in a couple of hours, we, you can so actually... It's pretty easy to find containers in the field, that's well known. Yeah. And then can and you show us what you're holding here, Marco? Plus, can we zoom this in is on the this? material, and plus this is 90% biodegradable. So it's also environment friendly. Fantastic. Which is yeah, yeah, it's nice and important to think of the environment as well. Yeah, yeah. And so by using this material, which is flat packed, and you can just order it in yeah, the yeah, slabs. Yeah, yeah, you, you just, you very, just... Very, very quickly, shove it around the wall, and, uh, uh, and, and, and you create a, a in similar a couple to of your, hours, your Yeah, cool. you just stick those panels to the walls of the containers, yeah. and then you, you, you can create uh, in... Uh, Marco, because I, I can imagine that in, in the Mediterranean, in a, on a sunny day, inside that container, you, you would get pretty hot quite quickly. Do you have any data from before you... Yeah, yeah, I can show you. Uh, this is this is actually uh, the the temperature the curve. So the, the, we we have three three curves here. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a container uh, without any insulation. Yeah. This was getting close to 50 degrees, yeah. okay. and it really goes together with the external temperature. Yeah. By putting uh, uh, those panels, uh, we transform the system into an isothermal system. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we do not have fluctuations anymore, as you can see yeah. here. You have both outside temperature and the temperature of container without the system, yeah. but you have a constant curve. Yeah. So there's no air conditioning inside the container, but nevertheless, despite hot conditions, you've got it round about 30, which is not brilliant, but you'd like to go down to 25, but it's better than the yeah. cat catastrophic 50. And, which and is we what can you definitely, if available, put also an air conditioning in, uh, in, uh, in the container, which means mm. that we But already by have... using passive systems, just yeah. what you're holding in your yeah. hand here, you've made a huge difference uh, to the... Already by system. sending those panels, uh, I mean, if we do not have any choice, we do already have a practical solution to secure uh, the, the storage. So what's next? And so you've mucked around with this uh, in, in the Mediterranean, you've tested this in, then, uh, in Mauritania. Yeah, the, this, this is, uh, and also this is about to be uh, deployed uh, in another uh, uh, couple of projects. Uh, and we want to really implement also the remote uh, temperature control for the cold chain okay. in uh, uh, possibly as, as many missions as possible. Fantastic. Ali, well, you need to chat to Anna and see maybe you can uh, join up teams and, uh, and, and do something clever with printed electronics and remote management, etc., to really secure the cold chain and get quality from A to Z. Fantastic. Jay, a final word? Yeah, excellent. I'm really impressed. I think, um, yeah, clearly it's showing that it's of benefit, so fantastic. I mean, uh, the, the quality of healthcare, it's hands in glove with the quality yeah. of the medicinal products. Mm. So by adopting a, a logistic solution, we actually are focused on the quality of healthcare that we do give. Fantastic. So Great. Well, well, thanks very much, and thank you. You can pan, pan round to all these. Uh, everybody wave for the camera. <laughs> Let go of your phones. I know connectivity is important. Uh, and so uh, uh, we'll, they'll all be here over lunch to meet the people that are in the audience. Um, but for now, it's goodbye from me, and it's goodbye from Marco, and it's goodbye from Dr. J. Ciao.